Just get your protein in as fast as possible after your workout or even in between your sets or at least that's what a lot of these supplement marketers want you to believe. But is this actually true or is there maybe another time frame which may be more beneficial to ingest a portion of your protein? The anabolic window has been up for discussion for a while now and when I just started lifting and even to this day I drink my protein shake during or even right after my workout. Plenty of gains have been made so far but in this video we will find out whether this is due to protein timing or some other different factors. Now we will start off with asking what the anabolic window actually is and it's essentially the idea that there is a short time frame after your workout where it's crucial that you ingest some protein because otherwise you will miss out on a lot of gains. And that's because well in the gym as you can see your muscles are sort of destroyed and your body turns into a catabolic state. And this basically means that you're well sort of losing muscle mass because your body is breaking that muscle tissue and other things down. But that's going to help you build muscle once you go into that anabolic state again. Anabolic meaning that your body is building those muscles back up. And to become anabolic you need that protein intake. So it would make sense that getting your body in that anabolic state as fast as possible would be crucial for muscle gains. However there is another camp of scientists that say that this isn't actually that important but the amount of protein that you're eating in a day is actually going to be the deciding factor. Because throughout the day you're essentially constantly in a battle of being catabolic and anabolic but you just want to stay more in that anabolic state to build muscle the fastest way possible and i do think that both camps have some convincing arguments so that's why it's important to look at what the data and the science actually says i have looked at all the literature i could find and trust me there are a ton of articles out there but i've gathered the most important studies to look at so we can draw a conclusion together now don't worry because i will try to explain the science in a clear and easy to understand manner so your brain doesn't get shut down at the end of the video. And we will start off by looking at one of the earliest articles on this subject which set off the debate. They essentially looked at a lot of different studies and came to the exact conclusion that it is apparent that both muscle growth and exercise performance can be enhanced substantially if protein and amino acids are ingested closely associated with exercise training sessions. And another 2008 study even went as far as suggesting that nutrient timing might actually be more important than total nutrient intake. However, I do have to mention that this particular study looked at both protein and creatine together. And creatine has been shown to possibly have a slight benefit when taken right after your workout. But as you can see, a lot of people are obsessed with protein timing, all because of the anabolic window I explained earlier. Now, luckily for us, one of the most well-known scientists, Brad Schoenfeld, worked together with some colleagues to publish this crucial meta-analysis to put an end to this debate. They looked at the effect of protein timing on both both strength gains and muscle hypertrophy with a combined 43 studies. A simple analysis without taking a look at covariates shows no significant difference in strength gains but does seem to show a difference in muscle hypertrophy. But that's without acknowledging the covariates. If you don't know what a covariate is, it's basically an independent variable that can influence the outcome of a given statistical trial but which is not of direct interest. And in the case of this study it was total protein intake so if you take into account that this could have messed with the results we finally come to this graph and as you can see there was no significant difference as to when you actually ingest your protein however this does seem to be different for individuals who train in a fasted state as we can see in this particular study so if you're training fasted, you want to eat your protein as fast as possible because you've been in a catabolic state for too long. And that's something that Schoenfeld also acknowledged in a follow-up study in which he states that there are others who might train before lunch or after work where the previous meal was finished 46 hours prior to commencing exercise. And this lag in nutrient consumption can be considered significant enough to warrant post-exercise intervention. So if you haven't had a recent meal containing some amount of protein four to six hours before exercise, you might want to look into that protein shake. 
But that's not the case if you ingest some protein 3 to 4 hours before your workout and possibly 5 to 6 hours if you've eaten a large meal. And in this case, you can eat protein 3 to 4 hours after exercise. Now, before we continue, please remember to smash that like button because if this video gets enough likes, I will look for some funny clip of a kitten like this one to put into my next video. Also, subscribe for more helpful tips and now let's continue. But pre or post exercise is not the only time frame we can look at. But before we take a look at that, we can conclude that the anabolic window is just a myth unless you're training in a fasted state, but total protein intake is going to be more important. So why am I still taking protein shakes right after my workouts? Well, to be honest, it's because out of habit and for some reason it tastes better after my workout for me and it's also a great way in my opinion to get in some water after dehydrating my system. But if you forgot your shake or you don't have them at all, you don't have to worry about losing your gains. Now to maximize muscle growth, you can however possibly ingest some protein before bed and to be more specific, casein. And that's because when you're sleeping you're going to do most of the repairing and if you then give your body plenty of what it needs throughout the night to repair, it could possibly help speed up recovery and such. And since casein is a slow digesting protein, you will get protein distributed throughout the night. And this means that you're going to stay anabolic long because when you're sleeping you're mostly catabolic because well you don't really eat for a while and this has gained some recent hype because of a couple of different studies suggesting that muscle protein synthesis is just more effective when you're well just going to start recovering while you're sleeping and according to this meta-analysis in the effective studies they used about 40 to 48 grams of protein 30 minutes before going to bed but the authors of this study mentioned that less could possibly also have positive effects they're just just has to be more research done with proper protocols to prove or debunk this. However, there is one small problem with this as pointed out by Derek from More Plates More Dates. The thermic effect of protein is very high, meaning that your core body temperature will probably rise after consuming a large amount of casein before bed. And as we know from one of my previous videos, a high temperature can possibly disrupt your sleep and thus muscle gains. However, I do want to point out that casein is a slow digesting protein and as we can see in the results of this study, the thermic effect of casein has been shown to be lower than whey protein. And there is also another study to back this up, which found no effect of pre-sleep protein on sleep latency and thus sleep quality. But I do take this with a grain of salt because I generally know that eating before bed isn't really the best idea. And I have to mention that in the meta-analysis I showed, the authors note that not every study showed the same benefits, probably because there is a difference between training in the morning or in the evening, suggesting that if you train first thing in the morning, ingesting casein might not have beneficial effects. Thus, my conclusion from this is that it's possible a good thing and something to try out. Just make sure you don't have to constantly hit the bathroom because you drink a lot of water with the shake, so possibly a smaller shake could be more optimal. If you don't sleep well, don't do it, but if you found no difference, this could be a potential benefit if you train in the evening. And from this we can probably also conclude that this protocol only works on training days. So to wrap this video up, if you want to build muscle as fast as possible, you don't have to worry about the anabolic window, unless you're training in a fasted state. You do however want to ingest some protein anywhere from 3 to 6 hours around your workout depending on how large the meals are which you are eating. Ingesting some casein half an hour before bed can be better for gains and recovery but can also possibly harm them due to the thermic effect. However, there is evidence supporting that the thermic effect is negligible. So it's important that you seek what works for you and keep an open mind for future research. You also probably won't see any benefits of this if you train first thing in the morning which is also something to look out for and only do this on training days. If you find this video helpful please remember to smash that like button to support the channel and make sure to subscribe for more helpful tips. You can always check out my training programs with a link in the description or you can watch some of my other videos to learn more about building muscle and losing fat. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys later.